Today, I'm going to walk you through a preparation that everyone should make themselves familiar with. It's the backbone to a number of sauces and a real workhorse in the kitchen. I'm talking about brown veal stock. The first step is to place your bones in a roasting pan. If you can't source veal bones, just pick up some beef or chicken bones and use this video as a guide on how to prepare them. In the end, you'll have a nice rich brown stock to use at your disposal. Now place your bones in a preheated 375 degree oven and roast them until evenly browned. While your bones are roasting, take the time to cut up your carrots, celery, and onion, also known as your mirepoix. I know, I cut a ton of vegetables on this channel, but practice makes perfect, right? Anyway, as a rule of thumb, I use enough mirepoix to equal 12% by weight of my bones. For example, if I have five pounds of bones, I use about 10 ounces or 285 grams of mirepoix. And for the veg, I measure two parts onion, one part carrot, one part celery. So in this case, I'll use five ounces of onion, two and a half ounces of carrot, and two and a half ounces of celery. It's been about 45 minutes, so it's time to check on my veal bones. They look nicely roasted, so I'm gonna paint them with some tomato paste. It's not necessary to be incredibly precise here. Just make sure most of the bones have some tomato paste on them. When you're done, continue roasting the bones for an additional 10 minutes or so. This is gonna give the tomato paste a chance to caramelize a bit, and it's gonna add an additional depth of flavor and complexity to your stock. Once that tomato paste has caramelized, place your bones in a pot large enough to hold all of your ingredients, and that includes enough water to completely cover your veal bones. Heat the roasting pan over a medium flame, then add your mirepoix that was prepared earlier. Saute those veggies in all of that wonderful leftover fat from the bones. Then deglaze the pan with a little bit of water or red wine. This step will help you scrape up all those yummy bits stuck to the bottom of the pan, also known as fond. Now carefully transfer everything from the roasting pan into the stock pot with your roasted veal bones. Then it's time to add some aromatics. Start with some fresh thyme, then parsley stems, a few bay leaves, and finally some black peppercorns. Add enough water to cover the veal bones by about an inch. Then bring the stock up to just below a simmer over medium high heat. Once the stock gets to a point where the bubbles slowly make their way to the surface, reduce the heat to maintain this very lazy simmer. It's also very important to skim any foam that develops in the surface of your liquid. This process removes impurities and some fat from the stock that could otherwise produce off flavors in your final product. After about 8 to 10 hours, your veal bones should look pretty bare. Most of that connective tissue and collagen will have liquefied and is now part of the stock. At this point, you can remove all of the solids from your stock and discard them. A good tip here is to do this in a strainer placed over another pot. This will catch any drippings that you can add back into the stock. Now, take the stock and pass it through a fine mesh strainer and into a container. This step removes any of the smaller bits of bone and veggies that you don't want in your final product. So at this point, you have two options. Option one is to leave the veal stock as is and cool it down to room temperature in an ice bath. Unfortunately, the largest thing I had to accommodate my stock container was a salad bowl, but it still did the trick. Once your stock is cool, place it in the fridge overnight. In the morning, the fat will have solidified on top of the stock, which makes it a piece of cake to remove and discard. But don't follow my lead on using a spoon here. A spatula is much more effective. What you're left with is a glorious and gelatinous mass of veal stock that makes a great base for a ton of different sauces. Option two is to make a veal stock reduction, which takes up a lot less room in the fridge and can be easily reconstituted with some water. So, take your strained veal stock and return it to the pot. Bring it back up to a gentle simmer and reduce the liquid by two thirds. My batch of stock yielded about a quart of reduction, which is about as much as you should have as well. Follow the same cooling method as you would have with the stock in option one, then place it in your fridge or in your freezer for long-term storage. Let the reduction rest overnight. By morning, you'll have a super dense and incredibly rich veal stock reduction that resembles meat jello. Most chefs consider this stuff liquid gold, so use it wisely. <laughs>